December 21st, the world's not ending. We're going into an energy shift. We have more control in our lives, and it's where do you want to go? Good enough? <laughs> yeah. All right, this could be pretty heavy. I'm trying to lighten it up, okay? Uh, this is, you can thank Peggy for this. She gave me a book to put it into clear perspective that I could share with you. So, December 21st, 2012 is not the end of the world. It's the beginning of another great cycle. Whoever came up with the words catastrophe or disaster, both of which contain the root word aster, which is star, knew the cataclysms here on this planet were directly related to our position relative to the stars. Earth is subject to many different cycles, often having to do with how it orbits through the cosmos. Some that say that major earth changes, such as pole shifts, floods, and submerging or surfacing of land masses, have happened often in history on this planet. There are many theories why this happens. Some explains that it's Gaia, which is our Earth, the consciousness of the planet purging itself of negativity. Gia's mission, her main purpose, is to produce life and thus provide the opportunity for energy to evolve. She's very patient and loving, but when circumstances develop that threaten her potential to sustain life, then Gia must take more drastic action. She cleans the slate and starts again. Well, that's what we do within our bodies. I hope you recognize that. So various factors play roles in these purges. Among those cited as possible causal factors in such cataclysm or earth changes are accumulations of ice on the polar caps, collisions with celestial bodies, such as asteroids and comets, and the effects of technology gone awry. Our planet is moving through the cosmos according to periodical cycles, and that our position in the cosmos has been and continues to be a key factor triggering these Earth changes. The Earth is subject to many different cosmic cycles. Different positions relative to other cosmic bodies expose us to different strengths of electromagnetic and gravitational force. A lot of us are really, really super sensitive to that these days. Some positions within these cycles cause the planet to come in contact with an increased amount of energy radiation, some positions with less. The amount of energy as well as the frequency of the energy with which we interact is a major factor affecting many aspects of life on Earth. Energy from different sources in the cosmos interacts with our consciousness here on Earth. This is the same basic notion that underlies the practice of astrology, which seeks to identify certain predispositions in one's character based on the position of the planet at the time of that individual's birth. Different energies coming in from different cosmic bodies are said to have their own unique qualities which somehow imprint upon the newborn personality. These different energies are said to affect us in different ways. There are several different cycles that affect life here on Earth, some small and less significant, and some greater, and some greater significance. Probably the most important one of this has been called the processional cycle. The ancient societies were well aware of this cycle. It is approximately 26,000 years in length. In other words, circumstances here on the planet change according to this cycle or pattern, okay? Taking 26,000 years to complete. The actual amount of time is 26,920 years. Different ages within this cycle have different energies, different qualities. But if we divide the 26, the 25, 9, 20 by 12, we get the 12 zodiacal signs. Starting to make sense? 12 ages, each lasting 2,160 years. We are said to be currently at the end of the Piscean Age, and we are now in, we are now in the beginning of the Aquarian Age. It is said that twice in every 26,000 year cycle, we're exposed to an increased amount of energy radiation. 
an accelerated frequency of vibration. Have you not found yourself actually vibrating at times, being aware of what's going on? We're in this period. And this also affects our tectonic plates, our volcanic activity, climate, magnetic fields, and other things. It also affects our consciousness. This is the key in our exploring of the big shift. Earth changes of varying intensities are said to have taken place roughly every 13,000 years, at which time we are predisposed to cataclysm. There are several different but related explanations for this phenomenon. In the con continual quest for balance, cosmic bodies are revolving around other bodies that have greater gravitational pull. Just as the moon revolves around the Earth and the Earth around the sun, so does our entire solar system evolve ecliptically around an enormous source of gravity, which we call the galactic center. Scientists have long been aware of this cycle, which is called the precession of the equinoxes. Our planet's position in the galaxy changes from year to year. This change has been measured and observed uh, on the star map in which our North Pole is pointing. How many know we're off by five degrees now? Yeah, five degrees. Okay. If we start recording the planet's position in the spring equinox of 2004, it would take 25,920 years before the planet would be in the same position relative to the rest of the cosmos. So we're literally cycling, guys, okay? And that's why everything is happening the way it is. Um, each year at the spring equinox, the North Pole would be pointed to a spot in the cos cosmos just slightly west of the previous year. If one mapped the spots year after year, they would eventually describe a circle on the star map. After 25,920 years, the North Pole would be pointing at the exact same spot on the star map as it was in 2004. You getting it now, mm -hmm. why we're having these issues? Good, okay. During this cycle, as our solar system revolves around the galactic center, there are times when our position is such that we're exposed to increased amounts of energy radiation. One theory is that the galactic center is an enormous center of energy, sometimes referred to as the black sun. Twice in every 26,000 year period, we are closer to the center due to the ellipt elliptical shape of this orbit. <clears throat> well, we all know that the Earth doesn't go, it doesn't go in a circle, it goes on a pattern like this, right? Okay, so another theory is that there is a photon belt which is perpendicular to the path of our orbit around this great source. We pass through this belt twice per revolution. So the Earth is going like this, but this photon belt is now coming like this. And that's what causes a lot of the shift and the radiation. So as we pass through this belt twice per revelation, revolution, sorry, when we pass through it, concentration of photons we are exposed to greater energy or higher frequencies. Whatever the explanation, the important point here is that for half of the cycle, the planet is increasingly exposed to more energy and higher frequencies, which causes it to vibrate at a higher rate. The life forms on the planet tend to entrain, to resonate in sync with whatever frequency the planet is experiences. That's why we're becoming so much more aware right now, because we're going through one of these major fluxes. Thus, as the planetary frequencies increase, the frequency of our collective consciousness also tends to increase, because our consciousness is interacting with more energy. So we become more enlightened and awakened during this period. The higher vibratory rate also tends to shake the planet causing many changes in the patterns and behavior of the planet. For the other half of the cycle, we move away from the energy source, thus falling asleep. At times, these planets are denser, more stable. In other words, every 13,000 years, the planet is exposed to greater energy that physically destabilizes it and it creates an opportunity for great change. Many Earth changes, including the Great Flood, are said to have occurred 13,000 years ago. 
we are said to be once again on the verge of a great change, a new era. We're about to enter the Aquarian Age, while well, we're actually at the beginning of it already. We're entering that part of the cycle that brings higher frequencies. These new circumstances bring great opportunities for us to make ad enormous advances in our healing and in our evolution. They, they may also bring about cataclysm. Okay, as the earth shifts, you know, it, it's not stable. So we have, we're going to have these vibrations and these changes going on. So the world's not ending, let me assure you. Some information is saying that this particular opportunity is different than the other 13,000 year opportunities. Some say that unlike other great transitions in the past, the planet is about to vibrate its way into the fifth dimension, into Christ consciousness, taking many of its inhabitants with it. This is what we refer to as the big shift. There are other lesser cycles, such as 5,200 years, the 500 year and the 20 year cycle, okay? And it's all tied into the mag magnetic fields and what's happening there, okay? But this is what's important. This pattern changes constantly according to set rules. These changes take 2,000 years to complete in a cycle. When magnetic strength is low, we are more receptive more open to new ways of thinking and perceiving. Has your thinking shifted recently? Have you changed where you're going and how you're looking at things? I'll make a bet that 90% of you have. It was 2,000 years ago when Jesus, Mary Magdalene, John the Baptist, and a host of other spiritual teachers came to the earth plane. We are now at that same point in our magnetic field cycle as they were at the time of Christ, a time of great transformation in human consciousness. That's the message I want to share with you. The world isn't changing. It isn't dying. We're energetically moving into a much more positive um, field, okay? So two factors, and I had all kinds of material, you don't want to hear all that, it's too heavy. Okay. So what we need to understand is, we would not survive if we don't have our sun. Our sun is our life force energy. And as the world changes and we become more in alignment with it, we raise our vibrations to be of higher awareness, higher knowledge, and do the things we need to. So, the beneficial aspect of this sun energy activates us taking up a path of consciousness, intense consciousness, personal transformation, okay, which many of us are going through. So, which of these two aspects we primarily experience will depend on the path we choose to walk. We can either choose to embrace a path of conscious spiritual development, I don't care whether you come to my church or not. I care that you go somewhere and do something. We can avoid our path to, to spiritual transformation. We can then have external things we depend on stripped away in order to propel us toward a spiritual path we are avoiding. So you want to be part of the action or you want to be part of the problem? We are currently in a time period moving into the fifth from the fifth to the sixth sun cycle, okay? Each of these um, 26,000 years is called a sun cycle because we become closer to it, the radiation, the movement, everything else, all right? So that's what we're doing. According to modern Mecca, uh, Mexico, the Aztecs, the energy of the sixth sun entered in 1991 when the fifth sun was still dominant. And the sixth sun energy gathered strength in 2003. On the main calendar, end date of Winter solstice, December 21st, two energies will be equal. From that time forward, the fifth sun energy will fade and the sixth sun energies will increase. So that by 2021, the sixth sun energies will be the major influence. The fifth sun was a time of looking outside of ourselves 
for external gratification and conquest. How many people do we know that are so selfish, they're so caught up in themselves, even if it's about woe is me, or where they're going, okay? That's what the last energies were all about. So watch the shift happen. If they're open to change, it is a time of illuminating our inner world and subconscious issues which we have avoided for lifetimes, clearing out our blockages so that higher consciousness can be our permanent state. This is also a time in which extremely advanced energy healing, energy handling skills will be manifested by many people who are walking the conscious path of self-transformation. The world ain't ending. We're just getting started. Thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you, Alva. That takes a lot off my mind. That was very informative. It's now time for our material offering.